Hello children, welcome to the science class. Now we will read about chapter 14. So dear children, kindly open your book, page number 145. Chapter 14, Light, Shadow and Reflection. Children, from this chapter, we will learn about luminous and non luminous objects transparent translucent and opaque objects rectilinear propagation of light rays and beams pinhole camera shadow reflection we see things around us during the day but not at a dark night. So light helps us to see things around us. An object that emits light is called a source of light. It is two types, natural sources and artificial sources. Objects in nature which emit light are called natural sources of light. For example, sun, stars, firefly, glow worm, etc. And the objects made by men which emit light are called artificial sources of light. For example, bulb, tube light, gas lamps, candles, etc. Luminous and non-luminous objects. Objects which emit light of their own are called luminous objects. For example, sun, stars, fire, torches, lanterns and fireflies then objects which do not emit light of their own are called non-luminous objects for example wood stones cars fans human beings and clothes etc such objects cannot be seen in the dark these objects become visible only when light form a Luminous objects falls on them and travels from there to reach our eyes. Earth and moon are non-luminous objects. The moon reflects the light of the sun falling on it. Then transparent, opaque and translucent objects. Objects can be classified into three categories. Transparent, opaque and translucent object. Depending on the way light passes through them. Objects which allow the light to pass through them are called transparent objects. One can clearly see through such objects. A transparent object is a clear object. For example, glass, water, thin clear plastic sheets and crystal like topes, rubby, etc. Then objects which allow only a small amount of light to pass through are called translucent objects. Light partially passes through translucent objects. One can see through a translucent object but not clearly. Examples of translucent objects are pressing paper, Tissue paper, oil soft paper, milky water and melted wax. And objects do not allow light to pass through them are called opaque objects. One cannot see through such objects. For example, rock, bricks, wood, human and animal bodies, metals like iron, steel, etc. Rectilinear propagation of light. Children, you must have noticed that sunlight coming through your classroom window appears to travel in a straight line. This is because light travels in a straight line. This phenomenon is known as rectilinear propagation of light. Here one activity is given. You read this activity. Through this activity, you can understand better. Rays and beams. 
A very narrow path of light represented by a line with an arrowhead showing the direction in which light is traveling is called the ray of light. A beam of light consists of several rays. The rays can be parallel, divergent or convergent. Here in this figure you can see first one is parallel light, second one is divergent rays and third one is convergent rays. In a laboratory, a beam of light is normally produced by using a light box. It consists of a bulb kept inside a cardboard box with a hole in it for the light to come out. Then pinhole camera. What is a pinhole camera? A pinhole camera works on the principle of rectilinear propagation of light. This camera is a simple camera without a lens and with a single small aperture. Effectively a light proof box with a small hole on one side. Light from an object passes through this single point and forms inverted image means upside down on the opposite side of the box. Take a tin or a cardboard box with one side open and the other side closed. Cover the open side with a dressing paper then using rubber bands or tap. This forms your screen make a hole at the center of the side opposite to the screen and paste a black paper over this hole. Use a sharp pin to make a small hole in the paper. The hole allows light to come in. Strum in a dark room and point the hole outside from the open window. You will actually see image of trees or people outside on the dressing paper screen. However, all image will be inverted. A light ray from the top of a tree A falls according to the figure children A falls on the screen at C. Okay, straight line A to C you can see after passing through the pin hole O. So the light A to C through the pin hole that is O. A ray from the bottom B falls at D. Then B to D one straight line light is there and through the pinhole O. Similarly, rays of light from each point on the tree fall on the screen after passing through the pinhole. Together, these points of light make up the image. You can clearly see that the image CD will be inverted. Working Place this camera in front of an object as shown in the figure. The light from the object travels into the hole from two points A and B in a straight line and forms an inverted image of the object on the screen as shown in the figure. Take the pinhole camera to a dark room. Light a candle in front of the pinhole. C forms the other side and look at the image of the candle on the tracing paper. Then move the inner cylinder which has the tracing paper on the side. Forward or backward to obtain a sharp image of the candle on it. 
To see the figure in daylight, you should cover the open side of the cell with your hands or with some cloth like towel. Try to look at some buildings, trees or your family members through your pinhole camera. If the objects you are looking at are in bright sunlight, their images will be sharper or clear. In a pinhole camera, the small pinhole acts as a lens and the image is obtained on the tracing paper that acts as a screen. A pinhole camera is a very simple device. It is good to take pictures of brightly lit objects. These types of cameras were used earlier to take still photographs. In those pinhole cameras, a photographic film was used to be kept in place of tracing paper. These cameras are not used nowadays. Usually, the inner slides of the cylinder are painted black. it helps in improving the picture quality by avoiding unnecessary reflection of light inside the camera so a pinhole camera produces an upside down image of an object this happens because light rays travels in a straight line then another important point to note is that images formed by pinhole cameras are real and colored and are not shadows then shadow when an opaque object is kept in the path of light it blocks the passage of the light the area of darkness formed behind the opaque object is called the shadow of the object The formation of shadow is a direct consequence of the rectilinear propagation of light. A shadow is a dark outline of an object. Shadow gives an idea about the shape of an object, nothing about the color, size, etc. of the object can be guessed by observing its shadow. then the nature and size of a shadow depend on the size of the source of light and the object the distance between the source of light and the object then conditions of the formation of a shadow the conditions which are essential for the formation of a shadow are as follows first one is presence of a source of light second one is an opaque body to obstruct the path of the light third one is a screen or wall on which shadow will be formed the regions of shadow two regions are there umbra and penumbra umbra means the region where a dark shadow is formed is called umbra or umbral region in this region there is a complete darkness and a total solar eclipse then penumbra is the region of partial darkness which surrounds the umbra region some light rays reach here reflection the phenomenon of bouncing back of light rays after striking the surface of an object is termed as reflection of light sunny surfaces are the best reflectors of light we all use mirror at home when we stand in front of the mirror we see the reflection of our face the small bumps and irregularities on a rough surface cause each light ray falling on the surface to get reflected in 
different directions. This type of reflection is called irregular or diffused refraction. Reflection of light from a smooth surface is regular. Here you can differentiate two figures are there. Reflection from a rough surface which is irregular and reflection from a smooth surface which is regular. Then you can see reflection in a plane mirror and reflection in water. Now let us see how light behaves when it is made to fall on a mirror. Properties of an image formed in a plane mirror. First one is it is erect and virtual. Second one is it is laterally inverted. Third one is it is as far behind the mirror as the object in front of it. Then difference between an image and a shadow. Image it is formed when light is reflected from a mirror or a shiny object. But shadow is formed when the path of light gets obstructed by an opaque object. Second one is it provides all details of that object like color, size, etc. But shadow is just an outline of the object and is always black in color. Image may be upright or inverted. Shadow is not inverted. So light plays an important role in the life of a living being. It makes the beautiful world around us visible. So this is the chapter of light, shadow, okay, and reflection. Again you read this chapter at your home and learn the important terms and also practice the key terms and quick recognize which are the important sentence of this chapter. Thank you.